Today, we are looking at an acquisition that shows a new emerging pattern for how big tech is interacting with AI startups. They're trying to get around antitrust concerns, but it might not be working. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we are talking about a new deal between AI agent company Adept and Amazon. Now, this is the time in the generative AI industry that we would expect to start to see a fair bit of consolidation. We're now 19, 20 months after ChatGPT launched and got the whole party started, and right around the time that a lot of companies are running out of money from their last round. Some of them will, of course, be able to raise another round and keep building independently. However, many companies will be forced to either get themselves bought or shut down. Interestingly, however, there is increasingly, apparently, a third path that is sort of like an acquisition, but not exactly. And so that's what we're going to be discussing today. Before we talk about the Adept deal, let's talk about the first big deal where people got a sense that this might be the new approach for big tech. In March, Microsoft surprised lots of folks in the AI world when they announced that Mustafa Suleiman, the co-founder of not only Google DeepMind, but more recently, Inflection, was joining the company to effectively lead all of their AI efforts. There were a bunch of things that were notable about this announcement. The first had to do with Microsoft's relationship with OpenAI. Effectively, Mustafa Suleiman was being brought in to do the job that they had discussed Sam Altman doing when it looked like the entire OpenAI team was going to come join Microsoft after the board kicked Sam Altman out. Some of the speculation then was that as they had started to plan for that, Microsoft actually started to really like the idea. And when Altman went back to OpenAI, keeping the team intact, they wanted to pursue the same concept, just with different personnel. Another line of discussion was whether it reflected Microsoft hedging against OpenAI as their only AI investment. And while that has been discussed in somewhat conspiratorial terms, it seems to me pretty obvious that in the wake of the OpenAI board acting capriciously, Microsoft simply had to start hedging a little bit more than they had been in the past. But that wasn't the only thing that made the deal interesting. In addition to Mustafa Suleiman, the deal was bringing a big portion of Inflection's team and technology over into Microsoft. In fact, it sort of seemed like it was an acquisition in all but name. We would ultimately learn that Microsoft was paying something like $650 million to Inflection for access to their technology, which was conveniently enough to make their existing investor base whole. Inflection had raised around $1.3 billion less than a year before. So that in and of itself was a big dramatic moment for the AI space. It seemed to reflect just how difficult and high cost it is to compete in this space that even a company funded on that sort of level might decide that it made more sense to go inside Microsoft than from outside. But for our purposes today, the paradigm that's interesting is this idea of an acquisition in all but name. It seems like that's what happened with Adept as well. Ali Miller wrote, One of the bigger AI texting topics in my circles this weekend was Adept in Amazon. Adept co-founder and CEO David Luan, former VPE at OpenAI and director at Google AI, will join Amazon. Other Adept co-founders and employees will also move to Amazon. Amazon will license Adept Tech, and Adept will continue its product-focused operations with a smaller team. Luan, the CEO of Adept, will oversee Amazon's AGI autonomy division and will have the automations team report into him as well. Reports say that Adept had 100 employees and that 20 will remain at Adept. Ali added a few of her own notes. She writes, it's unclear if the 80 Delta are all going to Amazon, but knowing Amazon's high level of ownership per person, that seems pretty high. But lower than other acquisitions I witnessed are not a crazy number. Feels like either high-quality agents are farther off than we think, or the money to get there is only at OpenAI and Tropic CSP levels. The Adept team themselves put up a note called an update to Adept, announcing some updates to our strategy and company. They write, Our mission at Adept since we started two and a half years ago has been to build useful general intelligence that enables people and computers to work together. Our plan has been to train progressively larger and smarter multimodal foundation models, fine-tune them into agents, and then build products around them that help people do their day-to-day -day work better. From there, they talk about the progress they've made. But they say, continuing with Adept's initial plan of building both useful general intelligence and an enterprise agent product would have required spending significant attention on fundraising for our foundation models rather than bringing to life our agent vision. Therefore, to focus on maintaining the strong momentum and potential of our agent tech stack, we are announcing some updates to our strategy and the company. Adept, they say, will now focus entirely on solutions that enable agentic AI, which will continue to be powered by a combination of our existing state-of-the-art in-house models, agentic data, web interaction software, and custom infrastructure. In addition, the Adept co-founders and some of the team are joining Amazon's AGI organization to continue to pursue the mission of building useful general intelligence. Effectively, Adept is saying that they were doing two things. Those two things run at cross-purposes, at least when it comes to the time available to them and what they would have had to do next. And so they're splitting it up with a big chunk of the folks who are working on general intelligence going to Amazon. The information writes, the deal implies Amazon could be looking to develop more AI in-house rather than relying on third-party providers. Amazon's licensing deal with Adept, which includes its agent technology models and datasets, is non-exclusive. Adept hadn't raised as much as Inflection, 
which, like I said, was over a billion dollars, but it had raised more than 400 million. So it's not like this company was without resources. Almost immediately, people started to see the pattern between the Microsoft inflection deal and the Adept Amazon deal. Stephanie Palazzolo in The Information writes, I never thought I'd say this about a nearly 50-year-old company, but Microsoft is turning out to be a trendsetter. First, Microsoft's $10 billion investment in partnership with OpenAI early last year prompted rival cloud providers to team up with conversational AI developers, namely Amazon Web Services similar packed with Anthropic. Then Microsoft's Copilot AI products set the roadmap of Google. Now Microsoft seems to be teaching Amazon how to do an acquisition-like deal with a well-funded AI startup without making a formal acquisition, in theory helping avoid regulatory scrutiny. Stephanie goes on, what Adept's statement really means is that launching AI for enterprises or consumers is hard if you don't already have a lot of customers, because companies that have a lot of customers are implementing cutting-edge AI rather quickly. We don't know the terms of the Amazon Adept deal yet, but Microsoft's quasi-acquisition of Inflection AI gives us a hint. In that arrangement, Microsoft agreed to pay Inflection approximately $650 million, mostly through an LLM licensing deal that would help provide its investors a modest return on their capital. I wouldn't be surprised if Adept and Amazon came to a similar agreement. That would be a passable outcome for the Silicon Valley investors, like Greylock Partners and General Catalyst that have poured over $400 million into the AI agent startup over the past two years. These deals are a win for the big tech firms, which get AI product expertise. I'm sure there are plenty of other struggling but talent-rich AI startups like Character AI, Cohere, or AI21 Labs, and big tech companies waiting, watching, and learning from Microsoft. And don't be surprised if the Federal Trade Commission pokes around, if only to annoy the acquirers or licensees of these deals. So where is the FTC right now when it comes to AI? Throughout last year and the beginning of this year, there had been growing bluster. For example, at the Wall Street Journal's Future of Everything Festival in May, FTC Chair Lena Khan said that AI model training could be a violation of antitrust laws. She said, The FTC Act prohibits unfair methods of competition and unfair or deceptive acts or practices. So you can imagine if somebody's content or information is being scraped that they have produced and then is being used in ways to compete with them and to dislodge them from the market and divert businesses, in some cases that could be an unfair method of competition. Then at the beginning of June, the Wall Street Journal and others reported that the FTC had indeed opened up an antitrust probe surrounding Microsoft. And guess what? This one was specifically about the inflection deal. The WSJ writes, Companies are required to report acquisitions valued at more than $119 million to federal antitrust enforcement agencies, which have the option to investigate a deal's impact on competition. The FTC or the Justice Department, which share antitrust authority, can sue or block mergers or other investments if an investigation finds the deal substantially reduce competition or lead to a monopoly. The FTC is drilling down on Microsoft's deal with inflection, seeking information about how and why they negotiated their partnership. The agency is trying to determine whether Microsoft crafted a deal that would give it control of inflection, but also dodge FTC review of the transaction. So TLDR, to the extent that that deal was meant to ward off FTC interest, wildly unsuccessful. However, of course, the big question is whether the deal actually passes legal muster, even if the FTC isn't particularly happy about it. In general, there is definitely a sense that antitrust issues in the era of AI are getting bigger, not smaller. At the end of last month, a top German antitrust official argued in the pages of Bloomberg that AI would intensify competitive abuses by big tech. Said Andreas Munt, there's a great danger that we'll get an even deeper concentration of digital markets and power increases at various levels, from chips to front end. Then just yesterday, we found that French antitrust regulators are preparing to charge NVIDIA with anti-competitive practices. The report came from Reuters. And what is known is that back last year, in September, quote, French antitrust enforcers raided the offices of a business suspected in engaging in anti-competitive practices in the graphics card sector. They didn't identify the company as NVIDIA at the time, but the chipmaker has since acknowledged that France and other entities are examining its business practices. It is far from clear how all these antitrust cases are going to shake out, but it is likely that they have, one way or another, a fairly significant impact on how AI develops. I will, of course, keep you posted as both antitrust actions, as well as these acquisitions that aren't really acquisitions, continue to become the norm in AI land. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.